Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I wanted to go ahead and talk about all of the series that I am in the middle of. So this includes all series, whether they are complete or not complete. They are all lumped together and these are all series that I plan to continue in. There's going to be a completely separate video talking about the series that I will not finish a little bit later on in Bookmas. A big thing that I want to try to do in 2023 is to finish some of these series because I realized that a lot of them only has like one book left that I actually need to read in order to completely finish the series or be caught up in the series to the point where there are actually no other releases for me to read at this time and I wanted to go ahead and do that because I don't want to keep starting series that I'm not finishing or that I'm not excited to finish and there are actually some series on here that I've kind of lost a little bit of interest in but because I'm so close to finishing and I only have one book left I have to do it I have to finish the series and so my goal is to keep better track of the series that I'm in the middle of for next year and to knock some of them off my TBR permanently so there are quite a few of them here I'm just going to briefly talk about what they are and we'll do our best to knock some of them out in 2023 Okay, so first I have the Atlas Six series by Olivia Blake. Now, I know that there's at least two books out, but I believe that there are more coming. So I have read the Atlas Six and I currently have the Atlas Paradox. So I definitely need to get to this one to be caught up in the series. I don't know when that third book is going to be released, but I want to go ahead and be caught up to the point where I know if I want to continue in the series. The Atlas Six didn't really impress me. I didn't love it. I think I gave it a three stars and I've lost a lot of the details of that book. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and need to read a recap before I get into this. And I plan on reading this physically rather than on audio because I think I'm going to get more out of it that way. But if I read The Atlas Paradox and I don't really love it, I think I'm going to go ahead and DNF the series. I will probably keep these beautiful Elimicrate editions on my shelves, but I might not continue, but I do want to go ahead and give this one a shot before I make that determination. I also have the Diviner series by Libba Bray. So this has four total books. I have read three of them and I need one more left, which is the King of Crows. I need to go ahead and just finish the series. I really enjoyed it overall for the most part and I want to go ahead and complete it. So that's one less series I have to worry about. One that I literally just started in the month of November, Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. Now I know that this is a wider world that has, I think three or four different series set in the same world with like crossover characters and things of that nature. This is just the first in the Farseer trilogy and then there will be more going on. So if I really do enjoy the Farseer trilogy and want to continue in the world, it's definitely going to get more expansive. But for right now, I'm only considering the Farseer trilogy as the one that I'm in process of because I might not read the rest of the realm of the Elderlings. So we're going to go ahead and see how I feel after the Farseer trilogy and then go from there. But this is still definitely one that is in progress and needs to continue. Next, I have the Cursebreaker trilogy starting with A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. There are three books total in the trilogy. I know that there is like a spinoff series that has happened, but I haven't actually started that one yet. I do have the very first book, but until I actually start that book, that series has not been started and is not in progress. I have already read A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken, and I just need to read A Vow So Bold and Deadly, which I did recently pick up. So once I go ahead and read that book, I will be officially done with that trilogy. I also need to finish her Defy the Night series. Now she has one other book out in this series so far. I don't know how long the series is supposed to be. I don't know if it's supposed to be a duology if it's supposed to be a trilogy or beyond but I will definitely be continuing because I really enjoyed this this was a strong fantasy debut I really enjoyed my reading experience of it and I just love Bridget Kemmerer in general so I'm excited to continue in this series then I finally, finally, finally just need to finish Nevernight Trilogy by Jay Kristoff. This is Dark Dawn, which is the third and final book in that Nevernight Trilogy, which is probably one of my favorite series of all time at this point. I love Jay Kristoff. I love his writing. I love his humor. And Mia Corvier is just such a badass assassin character. I love reading about. I love Mr. Kindly. There's just so many amazing things about this series. It's been, I think, maybe two years now since I read God's Grave, and I loved it so much I gave it five stars. It was absolutely amazing, and I'm excited but nervous to see how this series ends. That's possibly why I haven't read it yet. It's one of those things where I'm just kind of procrastinating because first of all, I don't want it to end, but also I'm worried about how it is going to end, but I just need to do it. This is another situation where there is only one book left and I no longer have any excuses. So this needs to get read. I also have started his Empire of the Vampire series. This is the first book. The second book has not yet been released. So I am actually technically caught up in the series because I can't actually continue in it. I don't know how long that the series is going to be, but I will absolutely be continuing with it. This is 
is a chonky baby. I expect the other books to be similar as well, but I'm down for the ride. Then of course I have House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. This is the second book in her Crescent City series. I absolutely loved House of Earth and Blood so much. I love Bryce and Hunt. They are probably now my two favorite romantic leads out of all of Sarah J. Mass's books. And I'm excited to go ahead and get to this one. This is another very, very chonky book. I need to go ahead and read this so that when she releases the next book in the series, I am all caught up. I also need to finish Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash in her Throne of Glass series. This series is seven books long and I've been reading it over the past several years. I'm not really in any hurry to finish it. I'm just kind of taking my time and reading them when I'm in the mood to do so. I absolutely have loved the journey over the past five books that I've read. I'm not necessarily ready for it to end, but I do need to go ahead and get it finished at some point. I'm just, I'm just not in any hurry because I know that this is a completed series, so there's not going to be any further books released. And so I don't feel any pressure to be caught up for any reason. I can just kind of take my time with them, but these two are definitely on my list to finish at some point. I do, however, still need to read A Court of Silver Flame, which is the fourth book in her Akatar series. Only A Court of Silver Flames has been released at this point, so I definitely have the opportunity to catch up before the next one is released. I also need to read Hero of Ages, which is the final book in the First Era Mistborn series. I know that there is another trilogy that follows a different set of characters, and I believe it's set several years in the future after what happens in the Mistborn trilogy. I admit that I am not as enamored with this series or in love with it as everybody else seems to be. I find the books pretty long and tedious and I lose interest quite frequently while I'm reading them. I do want to read Hero of Ages so that I can go ahead and complete that trilogy. I probably will not be continuing with Era 2 because even after reading The Well of Ascension, I was just kind of like, ooh, do I even want to continue with this? Do I want to? But I, I am, I definitely am, but I'm not sold on Brandon Sanderson yet. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I know everybody loves him. He's like one of the top tier fantasy writers these days, but I'm just not sold. He just might not be for me and that's okay, but I'm definitely at least going to finish Era 1 of Mistborn. I also need to read Kingdom of the Cursed and I believe Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco, which are the books in her Kingdom of the Wicked series. I have this beautiful fairy loot edition and Kingdom of the Feared in this edition is on order as well. So I'm going to have the completed trilogy. As far as I know, there are only three books in the series. They have all been released or the final one is about to be released. And like I said, I will have a completed set soon enough. And so I definitely need to go ahead and start working on completing this series as well. I also need to go ahead and read Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the fourth and final book in her Stalking Jack the Ripper series. This is another situation where I've kind of lost interest in the series, but I'm so close and I have all of the other books and I've read all of the other books that I just need to go ahead and and do it. Overall, it's been an okay time. It's not something that I've ever really loved or have really had the urge to continue, but I'm so close. I just need to go ahead and finish it. Another series that I have similar feelings about is The Remnant Chronicles, and I do still need to read The Beauty of Darkness. This was on my TBR, I think, in October, and I started it, and I got, I don't know, possibly 100 pages in, and I just wasn't feeling it. I've read two of the three books in the series. I just have this one left. I need to go ahead and push through and finish the series and not have to worry about it anymore. I also need to read the Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater, which is the fourth and final book in the Raven cycle. I know that there has been a Ronin spinoff, which I will not be reading. I have listened to all of these books on audio and I feel like I should not have done that because this is definitely like, I would say magical realism. And I feel like things have gotten lost in translation for me when I've read this series. They kind of get a little bit weird. I'm not really sure I understand what's going on. I loved the Raven boys, but the past couple of books, I've just been kind of confused about what's happening. So I plan to read the Raven King physically or at least read it physically while listening to it to see if I can get a little bit more out of it. But again, I've read three of the four books. I just need to continue and finish the series, say that I completed it and not have to think about it again. I also need to go ahead and finish the World of the Narrows series by Adrian Young. The first book in that was Fable. And I actually really enjoyed my reading experience of that one a lot. It's like a YA pirate fantasy. I really enjoyed the main character and the overall story. And there are two other stories in this trilogy, but I believe the third book actually follows a different main character but yet it's still considered like part of the same trilogy. So I want to go ahead and read all of those and just finish that one out, especially if I like Namesake as much as I did Fable. If I don't, then I might not continue with it. Any of these series that I'm talking about today that are not complete, that may have future releases or that I have more than one book to read left in the series, there is always the possibility that I will DNF, especially if I've only ever read one book in the series. Like with Fable, if I don't like Namesake, I'm probably not going to continue into The Last Legacy. But for right now, I have every intention of doing so. So that kind of wraps up all of the fantasy series that I'm currently in the middle of 
that doesn't touch upon all of the series that I have DNF'd, of course, or the series that I plan to start. Those are just the ones that I plan on continuing with in the future. There are definitely a lot of other series that I'm in the middle of that fall into like the romance or the thriller category. So I'm going to run through those with you quickly as well. I need to go ahead and continue with the bromance book club. I read book number one in that and I really enjoyed it. That follows a bunch of men who read romance books in an effort to try to solve their relationship and marital problems. They read those books to see like what women want. This is a series that I do want to see if I want to continue with as well. Again, there's full potential for DNFing, but if my reading experience of them stays the same, I absolutely plan on finishing the series. I also need to read Hook, Line, and Sinker, which is the second book in the Bellinger Sisters duology. I read it happened one summer, I think it was last year, and overall really enjoyed it. That was my very first Tessa Bailey. It's what made me want to read more from Tessa Bailey, and so I want to go ahead and knock out that duology. I also need to finish the True North series by Serena Bowen. I actually just finished book four in that series, and I've just really been enjoying it. All of the books are set in Vermont and they are kind of all set around the Shipley family or at least all of the characters they follow have connections to the Shipley family and I've really just enjoyed following each character as they find their romances and things of that nature so I definitely will be continuing. I think there's only seven or eight books in that series but there are a bunch of other spin-off books. Serena Bowen has had other authors kind of like continue in the world just following a bunch of different characters and a bunch of other places and people that we might follow in the True North series. I probably will not be like branching out into those but I have really enjoyed the True North series. Another series I need to continue is Savage Lands. This is kind of like a dystopian fantasy type series. I read the first two books and they're kind of like candy. They're not necessarily anything substantial but they're a good time. They're also a bit on the steamy side and I definitely plan on continuing with these as well. One series at this moment that I'm going to include here but I'm not 100% sure I will continue even into the next book is the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. I remember reading the very first book in that called The Deal and really enjoyed that because it was a lot heavier than I was expecting and if I remember correctly book two was the same. They all kind of throw in some heavier topics or family issues. I enjoy seeing that dynamic in romance books. I like the heavier hitting stuff. It makes it more substantial in my opinion. But there's nothing that's pulling me back to the series. There's nothing that's really making me want to continue with it. There's nothing like super memorable about those books or those characters that are like, yes, I absolutely have to continue. So I'm on the fence about those books. But if you have any strong opinions on them and you want me to continue, please feel free to let me know. I'm always open to some convincing. I would also like to finish the Tracy Crosswhite series by Robert Tagoni. This is a series that follows Detective Tracy Crosswhite. I've read the first four books in this series and have really enjoyed every single one of them. I like Tracy Crosswhite as a character. I like the Pacific Northwest setting. The crimes, they're clever. They're really well written. And so I definitely plan on continuing with these. These are ones that I can just pick up at any time and fly through. They don't need any particular brain space or any particular mood. So I am in no hurry to continue with the series and will absolutely be finishing at some point. I also need to read It Starts With Us, which is the second book in her, I guess It Ends With Us duology. I don't believe that there's going to be any more books in this series. I read It Ends With Us a couple of months ago and it wasn't my favorite Colleen Hoover, but it was still a strong and important story. And this is set after that book, but it follows the perspective of a character that we see in book one, but don't necessarily get enough time with. So I'm excited to see what she does with this story. I of course will be reading this. This is Colleen Hoover. I must finish this especially since I have this beautiful hardcover edition of the story. I also believe I'm going to be continuing with the Collector series by Dot Hutchinson. The first book was The Butterfly Garden and that was delightfully twisted. It was really short and so fast-paced but it followed a man who basically kidnapped and held girls and kept them as collector's items especially after they died. They He would kill them at a certain point and kind of display them around this elaborate space that he had for them and he called it his butterfly garden. He called them his butterflies and he would actually ink them with these beautiful, intricate, unique butterfly tattoos. I thought the concept of that book was fantastic. It wasn't anything that I was necessarily like emotionally connected to, like the characters, because like I said, it was very short. It's very plot driven. You're meant to be going from thing to thing to thing throughout the entirety of the book, but it was definitely dark and gruesome and I want to see what she does with the other books in the series. Next, I have a handful of K.A. Tucker series that I want to complete. The first and foremost, of course, being her Simple Wild series. Running Wild has currently been released. It actually follows a different character than the first two 
books followed and then the novella. So in the first few books, you're following Jonah and Kala and their relationship. And then in this third full book, you're following a character's perspective that you see in the first two books. She was somebody that actually had her eyes on Jonah. And then, you know, he got with Kala and she kind of had to let go. And so you're following her find her romance. She's the veterinarian. And I'm very excited to be back in this world, seeing some of my favorite characters. This is just one of those series that feels like home to me. So even though we're not going to be following Kala and Jonah, I don't mind that at all. I feel like I'm going to love following. I think it's Marie or Maria. I think that's her name. I'm going to really enjoy following her perspective as she finds love. So I'm going to be so grateful to be back in that world again. I also need to continue with her 10 Tiny Breath series. I've only read the first book in this series and it was a couple of years ago. So the details are kind of lost on me. But K.A. Tucker is actually definitely one of my favorite authors. So I'm going to at least pick up book number two in this series to see if I'm interested enough to continue. And if if not, that's totally fine. But I did enjoy the first one and I would like to give the rest a shot. I also have her Burying Water series. There are only four books in that series and I have read two of the four. So I will definitely be completing those because I really like the first two. There's also her Empire Nightclub series, which is kind of like a mob romance. I picked this up because it was a book club pick that Chelsea Palmer selected and it was okay. This was probably like the least favorite one that I've read from K.E. Tucker so far, but I'm absolutely going to be continuing. The books are very, very short and so they're super quick reads and there's only four of them. And I've already read one, so I'm more than happy to read the other three and just complete that series as well. Another romance series that I actually don't see talked about at all is the Dogwood County series by Alicia Whistler. This book was sent to me as part of a bookish subscription service that I was part of at the time. And this romance blew me away. I love it. And all of the books in some way, shape or form feature dogs. Dogs and animal loving is a big part of these stories, which also, of course, touched my heart immensely. But another thing I loved about the very first book, which was Rescue You, was that the characters are older. They're like in their 40s, which I can appreciate following older protagonists in these romance series, which you don't necessarily see all of that often, all of the time. So I really enjoyed Rescue You. There are now two other books out in this series. And if she plans on going beyond three, I will absolutely be reading them, especially if I enjoy books two and three as much as I enjoyed book number one. But if you like touching, heartwarming romance, if you like dogs thrown in, highly, highly recommend. Another series that I'm in the middle of, but I'm in absolutely no hurry to continue with because I am so far behind and it's like a never ending series. And it's definitely just a series that is for fun is the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich. That series has gone on for years and years and years. I think there's like book 27 or book 28 now at this point, And I've only read book 11. So this is one that I just continue when I want to. I'm in absolutely no hurry to finish it. I would be totally okay if I never finished it. A lot of the books, they all kind of run together. They're all kind of the same. Stephanie Plum is this unexpected bounty hunter and she gets herself into a lot of mischief during this job gets herself into a lot of trouble her cars blow up a lot that's a running theme throughout the story so they're just a really good time they're great palette cleansers if I want to pick up something that I know is going to be quick fun that doesn't require a lot of thought Stephanie Plum would be something that I turn to I'm never mad after I read one of the books so even though they're not really like a substantial series and I can't really differentiate one book from another I think I will probably still continue over time but they're not a priority. They're not a rush. I will just get to them when I get to them. I do definitely need to continue the Kinsey Milhone series by Sue Grafton. This is a series that I started when I was a teenager and I've been reading slowly but surely ever since. Sue Grafton writes The Alphabet Murders. So she started with A is for Alibi and just continued through. Unfortunately, she passed away before she could write her final book. So only Y is out and that's all that will ever be out. And even though I'm a little bit sad to know that we're likely not going to get a resolution to Kinsey's story, Kinsey is a character character means so much to me. She's a private detective. And like I said, I've been following her and her journey for years. I just love the way that Sue Grafton was able to craft these stories. They were so intricate and well woven and detailed. And the series in general just means a lot to me. And so I will absolutely be continuing. I believe I only have two more books left, X and Y. And then I will be done with the series because there will be no more since Sue Grafton has unfortunately passed away. I also need to go ahead and just finish the Unsub series by Meg Gardner. As far as I know, there are only three books in this series. Each book follows the same like main character, but it's always based around a different serial killer. And those serial killers Meg Gardner takes inspiration from real life. The first book was based on the Zodiac Killer and the second book was based on Ted Bundy. I loved the first book a lot. The second book, not so much. So I'm interested to see how I feel about the third book. But this is another one that I can easily complete. 
I also need to finish the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. Karen Slaughter is definitely one of my favorite thriller suspense authors of all time. She is dark and gruesome and she's not afraid to go there with her characters. I especially love her standalones but the Grant County series is solid as well. I have two more books left in that series before I complete it and then I will be jumping into the Will Trent series which now has eight or nine books at this point. So I definitely still have a lot of backlist to complete from Karen Slaughter and I'm excited about it. I love her so much. I think I've read three or four books by her this year alone including the second book in the series that follows Andrea Oliver. I am now completely caught up with that series because there's only two books and I've read both of them. I don't know if she plans to release more in that series but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on here as a series in progress because I assume that there will be more released in time. I also need to complete the Desert Plain series by Victor Mythos. He writes kind of legal thriller suspense novels and I really enjoyed A Killer's Wife which follows a prosecutor who at one point was married to a man who was found out to be a serial killer and what happens when she has to go back and talk to him him for help on a crime that involved like a copycat killer. That was very fast paced. It was very bingeable, turning the page and I'm excited to read more from this series and just more from Victor Methos in the future. I will absolutely be finishing this one. I don't believe that there are many books released in this series so I can definitely get caught up. I also need to read Fly Away which is the second book in the Firefly Lane duology by Kristen Hanna. I read Firefly Lane years and years and years ago and then I recently reread it in anticipation of the Netflix adaptation which came out and the second season was just released of that. There is a second book in the series and I want to go ahead and just complete that up because I'm sure that I'm going to really enjoy it. I mean it's Kristen Hanna. I do consider that one a series in progress and I will be finishing that one possibly in 2023. Another series that I started in November was the Detective Nicole Foster series by Greg Olson. There are only two books in this series so far. The last one was released in 2018 so I'm going to assume there's not going to be any more released but if there are I will probably continue a assuming that I liked the second book. The first book was fine. It was like a 3.5. It wasn't anything mind-blowing. I did like the writing and I did like some of the twists that Greg Olson threw in there. So I will definitely be finishing that book, especially since there's only one other one out. It would be pretty easy for me to finish that. And I will take it on a case-by-case -case basis if the series does continue in the future. I also want to finish the Eddie Flynn series by Steve Cavanaugh. Steve Cavanaugh writes very intense, fast-paced legal thrillers. I, at this point, I think there are four or five Eddie Flynn books out and I definitely want to go ahead and continue. I've read the first two so I only have two or three more to go and I will absolutely be continuing in that series no matter how far he wants to take it. So I'm excited to go ahead and continue to read that one as well. I also need to read The Exiles by Jane Harper, which is the third book in her Detective Aaron Falk series. So I've read the first two in that series. And if I go ahead and read The Exiles, I will be completely caught up. So that would be pretty easy to do as well. If there's one book left in a series, whether it completes the series or gets me caught up in an active series, I want to go ahead and read those books so that I don't have to think about them anymore and so that I'm no longer behind on those. So The Exiles would definitely be one that I would want to prioritize as well. And the final series that I'm going to mention here today is the Dr. Alex Carter series by Alice Henderson. I read A Solitude of Wolverines a few weeks ago and loved it. It is now one of my top isolation thrillers of all time. There are currently two other books out in the Alex Carter series and I want to read them all. I really really hope that the series continues and I really hope book two is as strong as book one. I would really love to find a series that I'm just so excited about that I just want to devour. I really love the wintry isolation feels of A Solitude of Wolverines. I thought that it was well crafted and fast-paced and thrilling and I'm so excited to continue with these books in the future. All right y'all that is it. Those are currently all of the series that I'm currently in the middle of that I do plan on continuing. I feel like I rushed through this a lot but that was just because there was so many and I didn't want to be here for hours and hours and hours. If you've made it this far in the video please comment down below and let me know roughly how many series you are in the middle of. Do you like to binge series or do you like to give yourself time between reading each book? That's how I am. I don't like to binge series. I feel like I need a mental break after reading one or I feel like I'm going to get tired of the setting and the characters and the story if I continue. So I often Often can go years between books in a series and so that's why I'm kind of wanting to clean up the amount of in-progress series that I have. And like I said I will be going ahead and making another video talking about the series that I will definitely not be completing that I have DNF'd. So stay tuned for that one. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.